Hi, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to everyone for uh, Indie Pi Data Pune event. So thank you so much for joining us here for yet another Pi Data Pune event. But first thing first, uh, that is what we are. So Pi Data is an educational program by Num Focus, which provides a forum for community to interact and learn from each other. The global Pi Data network promotes discussion of best practices new approaches and emerging technologies for data management, processing, analytics, and visualization. For tonight, we have a great talk for you titled as Safeguarding Machine Learning by Nikhil Joshi. Coming to about him. So Nikhil Joshi is an AI security researcher at Pi2, where he's working on implementation of machine learning in offensive and defensive cybersecurity products. At Pi2, he has orchestrated methodologies to pen test machine learning applications against ML specific vulnerabilities and loves to explore new ways to hack ML powered application. His research is primarily focused on security implications of deep learning applications such as adversarial attacks, model stealing attacks, data poisoning, etc. So, without further ado, I present to you. Nikhil. Hey, hello, everyone. My name is Nikhil. I'm a AI security researcher at Pi2. So as Mayank has said, my day to day job is to look through uh, different security and privacy issues in AI and ML applications. So we'll have a look at these uh, issues in this particular webinar. So what uh, we are going to do today is that what uh, I'm expecting that all of you have a basic understanding of how an ML application works. So uh, we'll assume that and then proceed with uh, what are the security and privacy issues are there in any ML application. So this is what we are going to look uh, at today. So we'll first have an idea of how an ML or AI application works. Then we'll have a look at different uh, attacks that are possible on AI, ML appli AI applications. And uh, at the end, we'll discuss some mitigations if there are any mitigations. So most of these attacks are currently in research domain and most of them do not have any mitigations currently. So we'll, we'll have a look at it, how uh, that goes about. And then we'll at the end orchestrate a way to test ML applications against security and privacy issues. So you can go ahead and use this this methodology to you know, test your own built applications against these kind of attacks. So let's have a look at it, how an AI application works. So most of you are aware about this. Uh, we have a data set and then uh, using that data set, create a training, we create a trained model. That model is either deployed on cloud or is it, it's deployed on user's device with uh, an executable package of application, right? And user uh, uses APIs or uh, user interface to interface with the ML model and make predictions using that ML model. Okay. Uh, so in this talk, we'll explore different uh, issues in this entire pipeline, how an attacker can abuse different ways with which uh, the ML application deployment and uh, working happens. So let's come to our first attack, first type of attacks, which is commonly known in uh, ML domain. You might have already heard about this. Uh, if you're not, uh, then we'll have a look at it and we also have a demo coming up for this attack. So it's called as adversarial learning attack. The objective is to just craft an input such that that input can be misclassified by your target model. So it could be a targeted adversarial attack or it could be just a normal adversarial attack where you don't have any particular target uh, as of what that input needs to be classified as. So in this example, we have an input image, uh, which is a street sign. And we want to figure out how these how to calculate these perturbations. So when you make those changes inside image pixels, you get a new image which will be misclassified by the target model. So this is a, a basic understanding of how an adversarial attack works. Uh, now, 
if you are already aware about uh, optimization algorithms, you can think of this as an optimization task, right? So uh, what happens here is that uh, you use an optimization algorithm on images to change the pixels of images, and the, uh, the, the, the optimization function is the activation at target neuron. So in this case, uh, the neuron that represents mailbox as a class will be activated the most after doing optimization on your input image. So let's have a look at how this attack works. So uh, we are going to perform this attack on Inception V3 neural network, which is uh, a well-known neural network. It's open source. You can download it and play around it. It's pretty accurate, to be honest. Uh, uh, so it's one of the state-of-the-art neural networks in computer vision domain. So here's an example of uh, how, how to perform this attack. So these are the lines which represent uh, the optimization that I have talked about. So as long as uh, you have, you, as long as you do not get probability higher than 0 0.98 on your target neuron, you keep changing the pixels and you, you calculate gradient on your input pixels, multiply that with learning rate, which is standard, uh, the stochastic gradient uh, descent method. So you implement that on your image and at the end you get one image which can be stored on disk and then used for predictions. So here is our input image. So this is what the input image looks like. It's an elephant. You can look at it and uh, we'll convert that elephant to be classified as a chameleon by target model. So let's first uh, have a look at what this particular image is being classified by a model. So we will run just normal, simple prediction on inception V3, pass the We pass the file to Inception V3 model and it will obviously give you some predictions right now. So we can see that uh, the Inception V3 says that the input image has an Indian elephant inside it uh, with probability of 0 0.944. So that, that's working good. So let's run our attack on this file and a new image will be created. We'll have a look at new image. So it, it could take a little bit of time to optimize that image. So here you can see that after every iteration, uh, the probability of target class is increasing, uh, which means that at the end we are getting probability as 0 0.997 and our target image is saved at this location. So let, let's see how that, uh, the, the uh, image looks like after it's been optimized by our our algorithm. So it looks similar to uh, the original input image, which was an elephant. Uh, here you can see, and with human eyes, you can just tell that it's an elephant, but it, it seems like it uh, it is interpreted as something else by uh, the Inception V3. So let's pass this image to Inception V3, and let's see what uh, the predictions are. Here we are passing the generated image to Inception V3 neural network. 
So it says that uh, the input image is African chameleon with uh, 0.99 confidence. So this is just a simple example how of how an adversarial learning attack works. And uh, you, you can see that it's pretty easy to fool these neural networks. Uh, so based on what your target classification output is, uh, it might take different amount of time for that. I have cooked up different images already for you. So let's have a look at those also. So this particular image looks like a street sign, but when we pass it to our prediction mo model, or our inception weekly model, can see that the image is being classified as mailbox with uh, a score of 0 0.997. Okay. So this is just a gist of how an uh, adversarial learning attack works. There are different ways to perform adversarial learning attacks. And uh, you don't always have to write the entire algorithm to perform these attacks. There are already existing algorithms that already existing libraries that you can uh, use to, to perform these attacks. So then have a look at clever hands and full box uh, after this workshop maybe so these are open source libraries they are on github you can download it and uh, use different algorithms to perform adversarial learning attacks on your target model so if you have a target model at your end you can just uh, run these functions on your target model and see if uh, an, an attacker can fool that, those models or not So uh, this is another example of uh, adversarial learning attack where the objective is to just change one pixel inside the image. Obviously, this is a very small neural network. And you can see that uh, this uh, first image represents a ship. But after changing just one pixel inside that image, uh, it, was present, it, it was predicted as car by target neural network. So these are some of the examples of, uh, having, of performing one pixel attack. then it's not necessary that you have to change all the pixels inside your image. You can have your objective defined for what pixels to change. So this uh, is a VGG 143 uh, neural network, which uh, was used to uh, you know, identify faces of uh, actors. So it's a desert database, which has faces of different actors, celebrities, and uh, the neural network was trained to identify the faces uh, from those, from that data set. So in this example, what they did was they created a spectacles kind of scenario where you change the pixel values in those spectacles. And when those were worn by uh, an attacker, it, the, the face gets predicted as someone else's face. So these are some of the examples of performing uh, white box adversarial learning attacks where you have the access to model, but what if you don't have access to model? What if the model is deployed on cloud? How will the adversarial learning attack work in that case? So a normal way of performing that attack, a normal way of performing predictions on uh, model deployed on cloud is you have an API, you use that to you know, perform predictions on the target model. But in black box adversarial learning, what an attacker can do is build a similar neural network, which uh, com which performs the task as your target neural network. So let's say it's a face recognition model that you are targeting. So the attacker can build its own face recognition model and uh, perform adversarial learning attack on that model. And when, when the adversarial samples are generated, they can use those same adversarial samples to perform uh, adversarial attack on target model. Now, uh, this, there's a research being presented which tells that uh, adversarial learning attacks are transferable. What that means is 
let's say one model is completing is completing the same objective of classification uh, the adversarial samples for that model can also be transferred to different models who are doing the same task so basically you can build your own model and uh, generate adversarial samples for that model and then use those adversarial samples to uh, perform attack against the target model so this is totally possible these are some of the real world adversarial attacks so so far what we have seen was performing uh, changes inside pixels but uh, most of the times you might not have access to the pixel values let's say uh, the the system is implemented which takes camera from uh, the, which takes feeds from cctv camera and identifies whether there's a person in the room so in that case you don't have any way to uh, you know change the pixels that are going to the model but these are also uh, these attacks can also be performed on real world uh, examples so in this first example you can see that uh, the researchers have created adversarial patches when those patches are worn the uh, the person detection algorithm uh, cannot detect the person which is there in the frame so that is also possible in second example we have an adversarial patch when that adversarial patch is placed next to your target uh, it changes the prediction so in first sample you can see that the banana is predicted as banana by classifier and uh, when the adversarial patch is applied it's predicted as toaster by the classifier so it's not necessary that you will uh, all the time you have to perform these uh, kind of fancy mathematics to create adversarial samples so uh, these are some of the examples where adversarial samples can also be created by just changing few things inside the input uh, here there is a mask that has been created which has uh, these patterns and these patterns are uh, classified as human faces by the algorithm so by a face detection algorithm so that uses a normal har cascading uh, algorithm from open cv and using that algorithm you can uh, the, these faces uh, the, the wearing these masks will uh, trigger that algorithm to be to identify faces on the masks itself so this is one attack where you don't have to you know, use uh, fancy mathematical algorithms to perform adversarial attack then it has also been proved that distorted uh, images like you zoom inside the image you uh, change you, you you just make changes to the image dimensions and uh, you know transpose the image or do some kind of things uh, similar things and those can also be uh, misclassified by the target classifier obviously there are mitigations for these kind of things where you uh, make changes in the image inside the training data set which can be used to train the model and model learns the generalization for uh, you know, these kind of attacks but uh, not always that is possible there is one more example where researchers were able to bypass cyclin antivirus uh, using similar techniques so they just appended positive patterns inside uh, malicious files and they just append some libraries which are uh, predicted as non malicious and at the end that malware was predicted as not a malware by a malware detection engine built using machine learning so on distill.pub we have this activation atlas which can be used to visualize uh, the layers of convolutional neural network so in this particular example you can see that the layer that activates the filter that activates when there is a great white shark inside image looks similar to a baseball and when a baseball is kept next to a, a gray whale it is predicted as great white shark so it's again a typical case of misclassification but uh, from an attacker's perspective uh, if it works it works right so the attacker has to be right just one times and not not infinite times so these uh, kind of visualizations of neural network can also be used to perform uh, different kind of the perform or generate adversarial samples for target 
model. So what if the model has uh, model does operations on text? Uh, is that possible? Is it possible to perform adversarial learning attack on those kind of models? Yes, it is possible. E even if uh, the model is performing, you know, classification on text or audio input or any kind of input. Uh, here, what uh, I am representing is a way that we have used to uh, create adversarial samples for a web access firewall. So the job of firewall was to identify malicious and non-malicious queries coming from different users. So we have used Lime framework to identify what the model is actually looking for inside uh, those queries and then change those patterns to get an adversarial sample. So let's first look at what Lime does and then we'll come back to how that attack works. So Lime uh, was uh, traditionally designed to identify biases in the model or uh, you, you know give uh, interpretability to model so in this example when this image is passed to live it says that what pixel values inside those image are responsible for that image being classified to different classes uh, so this is how a line works and uh, this is one of the good example where they were able to detect the bias inside model where the classifier was trained to identify Siberian Huskies and gray wolves. So uh, inside the data set, every Siberian Husky uh, image has some domestic background, right? It has grass inside the background. It has some, some, uh, some frames from home inside that background. But if you, if you know about gray wolves, it has, uh, it mostly has snow in the background because those are wild animals, right? So, what happened in that case was the model just learned uh, to look at the background and predict uh, what is there inside the image. It was not actually looking at the object inside image, but it was looking at the background and predict predicting uh, the, the class of that input image. So how we have used it to bypass uh, firewalls is that we, we provided input queries to Lime and it tells you what, uh, you know, what strings in the input query are responsible for that query being classified as good query or bad query. And based on that, we can, uh, here, here we have two examples where on the left, we have a good query. On the right, we have a bad query. So you can see that the script tag is uh, considered as a bad example inside query because it can used to perform cross-site scripting attacks. So we have used this method and uh, in just, just uh, appended the queries with uh, good patterns and came up with a shorter query that is actually malicious, but classified as non-malicious by, uh, by the target firewall. And the time taken to do that was uh, around 30 minutes. So. That's how easy it was to create a, a, a adversarial query which can fool the target ML model. And once again, uh, the point to notice here is that we have not used any you know, mathematical fancy algorithm to create adversarial samples. So this was all about uh, adversarial learning attacks. Now let's come back to different uh, type of attack. So. Uh, you know that uh, the companies or corporates or whoever is the owner of an ML model uh, puts a lot of resources into generating those models. So it can be an intellectual property for uh, the target organization or the owner of that model, right? So there may be their entire uh, business model or revenue generation idea is uh, revolving around the train model itself. So what if an attacker gets access to the train model? So that that uh, kind of uh, makes a huge impact on revenue generation for target organizations. So that is one of the threats, but there could be many. So we'll have a look at model stealing attacks or model extraction attacks. So in offline model stealing attacks, what happens is the model is deployed with executable package on user's device. 
uh, in online model stealing attack, the model is deployed on cloud and the attacker tries to extract the model that was uh, there deployed on cloud. So let's first look at uh, offline model stealing attacks. So here uh, we can analyze the serialized first. Uh, we will analyze the serialized model. Then we understand what frameworks are used to, uh, to build that model, then use those frameworks to basically load the model just like we do thousands of times in a day. We just load the model and you use, sorry, use that to make predictions. So here we have targeted one Android application which uh, uses different types of models to identify what is there uh, in the frame. So it, it uh, uses the model to identify different objects inside the frame. So this is, again, this is not just uh, an Inception V3 or open source model. So these people have all spent uh, a huge amount of resources already to build these models and make them uh, pretty good uh, from user uh, user experience perspective and from uh, the accuracy perspective also. So we got that Android application, we extracted it and uh, had a look at where the model is stored. Uh, so uh, a stored model is basically a binary file, right? So if you look at the hex dump of that binary file, we were able to identify that the model was built using Torch. So now the job is to use Torch to just load load that model and make it to you know, load that model and perform predictions on that model so that it works for you as an attacker. So few things we need to know before uh, using the model for predictions is that uh, what is the mapping of output layer to the actual classes? So that was stored in this categories.txt file. Uh, inside inside that Android application. So, and the model was stored at this particular location. So we just went in, went to that location and analyzed the model. And here you can see that the model class uh, uses two to four as a value to uh, change the in user input to a, a input of a standard size so that it can be used for predictions using model. So now our job is to just load any image, convert that image to two to four by two to four by three, and then use that image for, uh, you, then then use the model for making, make predictions on that image. So here, here's just a sample code of the, the just four lines code, which we were able to use to extract that model. So just some bug fixes, in the code and after doing that we were able to successfully load that model so uh, we can have a look at it right now so in this application the model was stored in assets directory so there are different types of models that are there in uh, assets directory generally mostly in building while building an app uh, uh, Android application, you are supposed to store the model in, in assets. So you don't even have to debug to find out the location of model. Then we have used, uh, uh, we have used Torch to generate a script which can make use of that model. So we'll see if the model is actually doing predictions on input images. So let's just have a look at that script. So. Again, this is a legacy Torch version. It's not PyTorch, but uh, the previous version of PyTorch, which was a legacy version, which uh, caused few issues while, uh, you know, loading that model. But uh, since we were not aware, aware about legacy Torch, it caused some issues, but we were able to get around that by just normal debugging techniques. So we take the model from model path. We have a sample image. And at the end, we perform these four steps. We load the model and we run predict function on that model. So what uh, the predict is doing is resizing your input to 224 by 224 and uh, then just transform and normalize that image. 
so that it can be used for forward propagation in the model. So just use model.forward function to perform the prediction on that model. So let's see if uh, you know, the loaded model was able to actually predict uh, the right class for input images. So we'll first try this image, which has two cats inside it. So let, let's see how the prediction is working on this image. So it's one dot JPEG and So just after loading the model, we were able to get right predictions where uh, the input image was predicted as cat with confidence of 0 0.4353, right? So there were different images that we tried uh, whether the model uh, is actually predicting the right class for image just to make sure that uh, the pre-processing that we are doing on the image is right. So this is another example where we have a coffee machine inside our image. So let's try and pass that to the model. So it predicts that the image has coffee machine. So then we again uh, try to go with a difficult kind of image where the object is uh, not that clearly visible inside the image. So if you have a look at this, it has a cat between two kiwis. So we wanted to see if the model is working, making predictions on this image. So obviously do not identify the cat from the image, but it, it identifies it as a plush toy. So maybe this is an adversarial sample for the target model. So we just wanted to load the model, but we ended up creating one adversarial sample. Uh, so this is again, another threat. If your model is exposed to the, ta to the attackers, because then it becomes easier for attackers to actually get, uh, uh, to, to build adversarial samples for that model and then try it against uh, the application. So let's come back to black box model stealing attacks. Now, if the models are deployed on cloud, how an attacker can get hands on that model? So just, just to keep a baseline clear here, what the attacker is trying to do is not pay the owner of model to perform classification task on its own uh, samples, right? So it's not necessary that he always has to have access to uh, the model itself. So this uh, black box model stealing attack can also be interpreted as uh, you know, label extraction attacks from the target model. So model is stored on cloud, the attacker is using APIs to communicate with the cloud. Uh, then attacker has certain samples in data set. Uh, the attacker uses those samples to generate labels for those samples using the legitimate model and then creates its own model, uh, which is a copy of the target model. And that copy can be used to make further predictions without paying the owner of actual model. So it's a debate whether this is, uh, this is an attack or not, but Considering from the business perspective, it might uh, harm the organization from revenue generation's uh, point of view, but sometimes it may not. Uh, it typically depends on the use case and you have to test it against these kind of attacks to understand how much impact that, uh, how much impact it can cause for the business. So on the same ground, we have also created one algorithm which, uh, which make, which may, gives an attacker leverage to generate a duplicate model with less number of samples. So we have created this algorithm called GDLR, which is gradient driven adaptive learning rate algorithm. So 
how we have come up with these equations and how uh, it was created is uh, quite out of scope of this talk but just assume that uh, these are the equations that we have come up with so gi is the gradient here and uh, we have used this function to decrease the learning rate after increasing gradients so there was some hypothesis uh, which we can discuss maybe in next talks to identify how uh, how gi how increasing increasing gi is actually causing uh, actually making the model stealing attack less efficient but uh, we have used the increase in gi to decrease the learning rate itself so that's why it's called gradient driven adaptive learning rate algorithm and these were the results so we have tested it on three different uh, classifiers with different data sets so the green line is the proposed uh, is the model duplication attack performed using proposed algorithm which is gdlr and the orange line is just traditional uh, optimization algorithm used to perform this attack so here you can see that in less number of epochs uh, the attacker could get a better loss so this is the result on logistic regression uh, this one is on MLP, where in second image, you can see that in just uh, 100 epochs, it was able to get uh, the loss, which was never achieved by the traditional method. And uh, for convolutional neural network, the results were very impressive because there were more number of classes. And we also have a hypothesis where uh, we can discuss that having more number of classes can actually help this algorithm to make the attack more efficient. So this is just a glimpse of how uh, an model extraction attack works in uh, model extraction attack works and how it can actually cause some issues from business and technical perspective. So next we'll have a look at model skewing attacks where uh, many of most of ML applications have this feedback loop from user where user can uh, make entries in the data set by clicking some buttons or uh, you know just uh, taking a case of spam classifier you can have a button where when that button is clicked uh, the user can say that this message does not belong to spam put it in my inbox so these kind of feedback loops can be abused by attackers to make changes in the data set and poison the data set and if that data set is used to create a model then obviously you have a skewed model, which uh, which is what is intended by the attacker. So here the attacker is poisoning the data set and generating a skewed model. We'll have a look at one demonstration of these attack. So it's a simple spam classifier algorithm that we have created. We have trained one uh, spam classifier model uh, and we have used Flask to create just a simple UI which emulates how uh, the user interaction works with that model. So Let's see. How this application works. So you enter any message here saying that this is my message and uh, the application in the background actually makes uh, use of this message to perform predictions whether the entered message is spam or not. So who oh click on send message button and it's predicted as not spam. So let's say we have something uh, like free, free, free string inside a message. So maybe that could be predicted as spam. So yeah, that message is predicted as spam by the spam classifier. Now uh, we have this mark as not spam button, which is a direct feedback to the model or feedback to the data set and Let's see how an attacker can abuse that to uh, 
make this free, free, free message as not spam. So, um, let's click on that button and it's marked as not spam. So here we are doing it manually, but uh, in a typical attack scenario, we'll have uh, the API access where we use that API to uh, send a bunch of queries to the data set which can poison the target data set. So we'll again mark this message as not spam. And in the background, you can see that the model is being trained uh, using the input queries that has been entered by attacker. So now when the uh, same message is used for predictions, you can see that the message is marked as not spam. So, so this is what happens in a typical scenario where an attacker could poison the feedback loop and uh, perform and, and perform model skewing attacks to skew the model in intended direction. So this was all about model skewing attacks. Uh, so this is one more interesting example that uh, I've seen a few days back where uh, researchers were uh, have designed these uh, t-shirts. So there, there's a website called adversarialfashion.com. You can go ahead and uh, have a look at those t-shirts where uh, the t-shirts has license plates on it. So uh, when the government was using that to surveillance, uh, perform surveillance on uh, the people uh, to identify what, uh, you know, just keep a track of uh, what cars are being going where, what vehicles are passing through the camera. So using that, uh, an attacker can make just garbage entries to the data set. And yeah, that can be Again, these kind of simple attacks can be performed to poison the data set. It just depends on your creativity to abuse the uh, the feedback loop that was created uh, for for the end user to communicate with the model. So there is this another kind of attack that is again possible on models when the attacker has access to the white box model. So they can use that model to identify what was there in the training set. And the information in the training set could be sensitive. So it's a proper uh, information leakage kind of vulnerability where uh, an attacker can use the model to identify samples from training set. So in this paper, what they have uh, did was run the optimization on input sample to get highest activation at target neuron, where uh, you know you just know the target, uh, and uh, you you run uh, the optimization on input, and at the end you get this image which looks similar to the image from the input data set. So this is a face recognition model uh, that was targeted by attackers. So basically, you get an access to what are the employees' faces looks like in. Uh, the target in the target application. So there is this another paper where uh, they have proved that model has this tendency to uh, perform unintended memorization attacks on neural networks. Uh, so, so neural networks have this tendency to memorize the sequences from input data uh, where it's not like, uh, it's not like where uh, you have the traditional case of overfitting so the neural network is not overfitting to the input data set, but it's actually remembering sequences from the input data set. So if you have this uh, sequence prediction model and you make some inputs to the sequence, then you can actually use that to extract some information from the sequence. So, 
So these are all about ML specific attacks. So let's have a look at uh, what different attacks can these be paired with to have even more impact on the target uh, AI application. So you, so there are normal VAPT techniques where you have traditional penetration testing methodology and that uh, those vulnerabilities found in normal penetration testing methodology can be paired with uh, these ML specific vulnerabilities and uh, could could be used by attacker to have more uh, more impact on target application. So, so far we know what kind of attacks are uh, possible on ML applications. Uh, now let's have a look at how to test your application against that and to make sure that these are not happening or, or your application is not vulnerable to these kind of attacks. So uh, this is how a traditional penetration testing methodology works. And inspired from that, we can create a different technique to you know test your own applications against these kind of attacks. So what happens in traditional pen testing is most of you, maybe you are aware about that, but in security domain, it's uh, it's a pretty basic knowledge to have. So first we do some uh, reconnaissance on target where we identify, uh, uh, identify what uh, is the metadata kind of thing about target where, uh, and then, then uh, scan the target for different vulnerabilities. So maybe you find out some port is open on target, then uh, scan that port to identify whether there is a vulnerability on that target port and use that to get access to uh, use that vulnerability on uh, the application running on target port to get access to your target. So this is just a normal pen testing methodology. And similarly, we can orchestrate the security and privacy assessment for AI application. So what can be done here is that you first understand the application, what the use case is, what uh, the capabilities of that product are. So in that range, you can you can just nar narrow down your range to perform different attacks on uh, your target AI application. And uh, once you have the knowledge of attack surface, uh, you can uh, do some threat modeling on that attack and identify how the user is interacting with your target application, what end endpoints are exposed. Uh, is it a black box or a gray box or white box kind of application where, uh, and, and uh, how fine grained or coarse grained uh, access does the end user have for that application. Based on that, you can, uh, test this application for different kinds of attacks that we have talked so far and uh, then work on its mitigations. So talking about mitigations, uh, starting from first uh, adversarial attacks. So for adversarial learning attacks, there are no concrete mitigations where you uh, just perform one patch and uh, the model is totally not vulnerable for adversarial learning attack. That is not a scenario here. So there are a few ways with which uh, you can uh, make it difficult for attackers. Uh, maybe don't give access to ad uh, access, uh, white box access to the model for attackers. Uh, maybe train the model on adversarial samples itself so that uh, the model understand what the adversarial samples are. But again, it just makes attacker uh, attackers job difficult to create an adversarial sample, but it does not stop an attacker from creating those samples. Then about model uh, extraction attacks, where you can have the model stored uh, either on device or on cloud. If the model is stored on device, don't make the mistakes that uh, are displayed in our target application in, in our demo. So don't, don't have your model unencrypted on the device itself. Uh, or just don't even deploy the model on device unless uh, the end user pays for it maybe or if, it, if it's possible, always try to have the model deployed on cloud, but uh, it again depends on the use case, whether it is possible for 
uh, for for an application to have the model uh, deployed remotely. So then for model skewing kind of attacks, uh, you could have a, a golden data set where every skewed model can be tested against that data set. And uh, if the predictions, if, if the performance of model is good on that data set, then only deploy the model to, uh, to end user. If the performance for that is not uh, good for, uh, the performance of model is not good for golden data set, then do not deploy that uh, model for end users. So these are some of the mitigations that uh, you can uh, keep in mind while building the model or building the AI application. But uh, yeah, at the end, it's, it's, it just makes the attacker's job difficult, but does not make uh, the application completely non-vulnerable from attackers. So this is all for this webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put that in chat and uh, I can answer those questions. So there's one question, uh, how can changing one pixel will result in predicting different class? So the paper that I have shown you uh, is targeted for different uh, a specific set of classifiers, the neural network classifier, which are uh, trained on low resolution images. So in that case, uh, changing one pixel could have a higher impact on predictions, but in, in normal case where you have a larger neural network, which takes in account a larger number of pixels, it might not be possible to just change one pixel and have a different class predicted. Uh, there's one question DOS on ML model. So DOS means denial of service attacks on ML model. So it's possible in one of the case where we have tested one ML model against DOS. So what that AI application was uh, using was one vulnerable open source, uh, vulnerable version of OpenCV. And uh, there, was, there was one exploit in that OpenCV where an image was opened using that and a malicious image was opened using uh, the imread function in OpenCV, then uh, it crashes the entire application. So that is totally possible, but what we have tested from, uh, I can assure you that if there are any vulnerabilities in baseline frameworks itself, that can be abused to perform DOS on ML models.
so i think these are all the questions so if you have uh, any questions or any ideas or want to work uh, on any similar project uh, or you just want to test your application uh, for different kind of attacks then maybe we can uh, we just have a project together and work on it yeah uh, if you have any questions you can ping me back to my twitter handle or or my email id